and welcome to the Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at the latest addition to Hikvision's 8 series range of PEZs. This is the DS2DF 8C842IXS-AL. So the DS2DF 8C8 reflects a 8 megapixel model and there's also a DS2DF 8C4 which is a 4 megapixel variant. So two models, two different resolutions available. At the end of the AEL there is some models with a W, that means it's got a built-in wiper as we can see with this model here. Lots of new features and functions with these two new models. First of all the, the built-in wiper is an auto rain sensing wiper so that will obviously come into action as and when needed automatically. There's no need for you to manually use the wiper to clear any sort of water droplets off the front of the lens glass etc. So it's got a 42 times optical zoom lens, so a very powerful zoom lens on this unit with 16 times digital as well. It also is accompanied by 500 meter range infrared LEDs as well, so complements the, the powerful lens zoom capabilities by giving equally as powerful IR for red range as well. So them two can work side and side in night mode. It's a dark fighter unit. It can give color images down to 0.00 two lux. Black and white images down to 0.000 two lux. That's without the infrared. Obviously infrared will, will give you illumination in zero lux. Uh, so on the actual base of the unit. Now this unit works like a lot of the other 8 series units on the market. It has a, a top hat with a little hanging hinge which connects to the main body there so this will be fixed to the actual bracket and this allows you to hang with the safety clip whilst terminating your connections here. So we've got our RG45 connection here for data and also high PoE, 60 watts PoE. We've got a RS45 connection for connecting third party keyboards We've got CVBS output, so that's a standard resolution output mainly for commissioning purposes. And we've also got our alarm inputs and outputs. So we've got seven alarm inputs, two alarm outputs, and we've also got an audio input and output as well on these connections here. This particular unit supports quite a few other sort of bells and whistles, which I'll quickly go through. So the unit has rapid focus. That will enable the image to remain in focus when you're zooming in and out at speed which again is a useful feature on a lens as powerful as this. Got a gyroscope EIS for increased image stability, so th that'll basically eradicate any shaking in the image. If the camera's got slight movement in it when it's moving or with the wind or how it's being installed, then the EIS function eliminates any image shudder that you'll see, especially when you zoomed in. It's amplified massively when you zoomed in. So the gyroscope e EIS is a even greater technology in dealing with image shaking, etc. It's got a glass heater on the front, so that again is useful for clearing moisture, frost, ice, etc. Cold weather periods. Auto tracking 3.0 is something that's new, which we'll look at later in this video, but that actually has the ability to target trigger for a specific face or a specific vehicle. So this unit does have vehicle and face detection built into it. It can capture up to 30 faces in one instance. It's got face comparison, which is how it uses its target triggering. It's also got road traffic, so it's got vehicle detection, license plate, vehicle model vehicle color and again it's also got the vehicle arming as well so it can arm and track on a specific vehicle which again we'll look at later on in this video it's got 140 decibel wdr which is very powerful it's built into the unit as well onboard sd card slot can take up to a 256 gigabyte sd card as well and it's got the usual smart events as well intrusion detection line crossing region exit region entrance, vandal proof alarm, object removal etc, all the usual sort of smart events as well are built into this PEZ as well. So without further ado what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing fitted and we'll have a look at some of the features that we've obviously just mentioned in action. Okay I'm now at the web front end of our DS2DF HC842IXS PTZ and you can see there we've got a, a nice wide angle image overlooking Middlesbrough's iconic transporter bridge. So this is fully wide angle so it's a, the zoom level is one at the moment. I just want to give you an idea of the capabilities of 42 time zoom lens so you can see that area the transport bridge there how far away it is so i'm just going to quickly select preset 2 which is fully zoomed in and we can see as it slowly moves in basically the capabilities of a 42 times zoom lens optical zoom lens and it's just about there there we are so that's full 42 times optical zoom there at that level so that's gone from 7.5 mil to 315 mil so minimum zoom to maximum zoom between the two points and you can see there the level of zoom that we're actually getting, fairly impressive zoom levels from this particular camera. So I'm just going to move it back to where it was. And then we can see as it zooms out, it's back fully wide angle there. So I'm just going to go into the, the menu of the PEZ camera now. 
I've got various options obviously down the, the left hand side. If we click on system, we can see under VCA resource we've got various options, five options there which the PZ is capable of. Obviously only one function can be taken advantage of at a time so the unit will reboot when you change whichever function you're selected to. Obviously we're going to concentrate on vehicle arming today for our demonstration but the unit also has person arming, road traffic which is plate, vehicle capture, smart events, the usual line crossing intrusion detection with human and vehicle detection. We've also got face capture as well which can allows for up to 30 faces per second to be captured through the actual camera. So person arm and vehicle arm basically use this camera's new auto tracking 3.0 or smart tracking 3.0 which allows the, the unit to track on a specific person or a specific vehicle which arms the tracking and then the, the actual tracking comes into play. So we're going to look at vehicle arming today. If I just move down to PEZ option on the left we can see a few other settings here that are of interest. Obviously the wiper setting I mentioned earlier it now has auto rain sensing which can be selected here through the auto setting or one time which is when you manually select it through the PEZ controls to or clear any rain. If we go to the vehicle arming option there we've got obviously common settings and advanced settings. Now if we go down to advanced settings first a couple of menus here which are of, of particular interest. Under advanced we've got various options there that relate to the actual tracking durations and also wait periods. So we've got a dwell time after it fails to track so if it loses what it's tracking it will stay in the location for that period before it returns back to its scene or scenes which we'll look at shortly. We've also got validity settings as well so if it loses validity of what it's tracking and that's down more down to the algorithm and if the algorithms the validity level within the algorithm drops to the point where it's it's below the, the, the minimum for, for what it's tracking then it, you can also tell it to wait for a set period here as well. We can also upload the license plate information capture the plate number of the vehicles that's passing through the detection zone as well. Uh, if we move across to black and white list, obviously we're all familiar with black and white lists from NPR units. Slightly different with the, the white and black lists on this particular camera. So we've got three options. We've got normal mode which basically means the, the camera will not arm or it will not be armed by specific vehicles or plate vehicles plates, plate numbers. If you set it to white list what that'll do is it'll track anything that's not on the white list so if you've got a list of vehicles that you want it to ignore you can put them on a white list and it'll track anything else. Blacklist mode is basically the opposite so it will track the vehicles you put on the blacklist and ignore anything else and that's what we're going to quickly look at today. So I'm going to select blacklist and I'm going to upload my plate list which I've already prepared. Well I say list there's only one plate on it but it's all we need for today's demonstration so we're going to import this list and you can see we've got a blacklist plate and the plate number there which is a colleague who's going to be conducting the demonstration today. So we're going to save that option like so. We've also got an arming status there which basically tells us the status of the unit which is unarmed at the moment. So if we go back up to common settings we've got an arming scene. Now this basically allows us to produce various scenes which can be used a little bit like a patrol so the camera will switch between various positions or scenes and then within each scene there'll be a vehicle arming detection area which the camera will obviously be monitoring and looking for anything on the blacklist. So I'm going to quickly move my camera to a designated preset which I've already set up like so. Go back into my tracking arming scene. So we can add this scene to the list like so. So we've got the scene added and you can repeat this process a little bit uh, like adding presets to a patrol but I'm only going to concentrate on the one scene today but you could potentially move the camera to another position add another scene. So once you've got the scene in place we can move across to the speed dome rule settings we've got scene one there which we can enable you can see that we've got four lanes on the screen which is the maximum that it can handle within a set scene but we're only, we're only going to concentrate on one lane so I'll get rid of three of those from the right hand side so we've got one lane left on the screen and we can position the lane just like we were positioning an AMPR detection area which performing a very similar action really it's monitoring the vehicles as they pass through the actual lane so I'm gonna I mean it doesn't matter whether you leave these totally straight on the image or whether you angle them like this I think it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing I think when you angle them to the sides of the curbs if you like so I'm gonna quickly just move that like so and then lift the trigger line up and that's the capture point there. So we've got scene direction obviously in our demonstration the vehicle is going to be coming from the car park through the actual zone so they're going to be moving downwards. 
but there's obviously various options there for how the vehicle will be passing through the detection area. I've got vehicle detection so we can enable that and we can arm the lane which means it's ready for action and save and we can see there we've now got our detection area successfully figured. So we've now got a schedule option on the right so we're now in the scheduling green for your vehicle arming and you can see it's very similar to any of the schedules recording or linkage action schedule that you've seen with any high vision device. So we set our schedule for every day of the week across a 24 hour period to when we want the actual vehicle arming to be, to be active. So we can enable that schedule at the top. And now one important thing we need to do is we need to click on the actual schedule and go into the configuration option here. And this allows us to add our scene to the patrol sequence. It's fairly important because without that it doesn't know what scenes it needs to be looking at. So this again is like adding a patrol, configuring a pat PTZ patrol. So we add our scenes one at a time and then we set our dwell time for each scene and that's how long the PTZ will be stood within that scene monitoring for, for traffic and then it'll move to the next scene and so on. So you can configure your scenes here and once you've done that, obviously you can add additional scenes with this plus icon. Once you've done that, click OK. But remember to copy it to the other days of the week as well. Like so and then that should save. There we are, so that's saved. So back on the live view, we've now got our detection area and also our tracking vehicles as well. So it's monitoring these vehicles and waiting to obviously read any that pass through this detection zone. So now we're going to put, pass on to a live demonstration that my colleague has kindly agreed to carry out for us. Okay, so the only thing left for us to do now is to actually demonstrate the vehicle target tracking feature in action. So we can see from the scene we've got various parked cars. All of them are being mapped by the PEZ, so it's aware that they're all in the scene. So what we're going to do first is one of my colleagues is going to pull out with a vehicle that's not on the blacklist. And then the second vehicle to pull out, which is the white vehicle, is the plate that we programmed in onto the blacklist earlier on in this video. So my colleague's now pulling out. So what should happen here is the PEZ should ignore this particular vehicle as it's not target vehicle that the PTZ is programmed to react to so as you can see there it's been ignored the next thing we should see is the second vehicle pull out which is a blacklist plate blacklists programmed to be tracked when detected straight away there we have a target the PTZ has tra targeted the vehicle and is now tracking that vehicle whilst it's in the scene so my colleague's just going to drive down the bottom of the road, turn around and come back. But you can see that the, the vehicle has been targeted. And uh, here he is on his way back there. And hopefully you'll be able to see the plate matches the plate on our blacklist from earlier on. And away he goes. But the PTZ will continue to track the vehicle as long as it's in the scene in accordance to, to the settings, the validity settings that we looked at earlier on. And also the uh, fail to track duration, park duration as well. But uh, there it's, it's obviously tracked my colleague round to the rear of the other side of our building. So that's just a quick demonstration of the vehicle tracking facility and what you can do with it. And like I say, there is various other settings that we looked at earlier that you can actually have this particular PEZ set to under the VCA resource. So we've obviously had a look at vehicle arming. Person arming is another feature which can be used, which we haven't looked at today. And also road traffic, smart event and face capture as well. So a, a feature pack PEZ. The vehicle arming obviously is something that's new, not seen before, and I hope that you've found this demonstration useful and something that you can implement on future installs, which I'm sure you'll be able to. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Please continue to like and share. Additional questions on the DS2DF HC8421 or HC4421, please get in touch with your account manager. Any technical questions, please contact Dynamic CCTV technical department where we'll be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.